there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. It's always a privilege, absolute privilege to um, come into your home, your phone, wherever, and um, want you to know that you're welcome here. We're on five days a week and hope that you join us if you're brand new. Uh, we welcome you and I want at the top of the show to thank you for the wonderful, wonderful uh, letters we've been getting. I've been getting cards, Christmas cards, and we love you. So thank you for that. And I have a return guest today. I'll introduce him to you after we make the recipe. You know, we're going to make pecan pie bars. Could it get any better than that? I think not. So Stephanie and I will show you how to do that. But I want to talk to Dr. Page, who has been with us before, possibly nine or ten years. And at that time, he wrote a book on sleeping issues. I remember it very well. And today we're going to talk about this book, Spoonful of Courage for the Sick and Suffering. And right off the top here, I want to advise you to get this. This really did something for my thinking, that a surgeon who walks through the hospitals and the operating rooms and they see all kinds of um, reactions to what people are going through. This doctor has seen some great, great experiences in here. It kind of changed the way I look at things. And also he's got a kind of a journal here on uh, surviving sickness and suffering. We'll talk to him about that for a little while. Um, so I'm delighted to have him back and I love to talk to doctors. I just find it so fascinating. And when you can be a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you kind of take advantage of it, which I already have today. And I'll tell you about that when I'm talking to Stephanie. But uh, before I join her, let me remind you, we are viewer supported. That means the folks who watch the programs, they'll send an offering in or they can uh, use our 800 number that is coming up on your screen. You can write to me at box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758 or 1-800-229-0059. And we will thank you so much. It's just, I don't know, so thought provoking to me that we can be a blessing to people and we can have this ministry going back and forth. And it does cost to have cameras and camera operators and all those things. And you help defray those expenses, and we thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm over here with Stephanie. Yep. I got to confess. Oh, confession when, time. Well, when the doctor came in, I got a little free advice. I asked him about something I was taking. He looked at it, and I don't know if he's going to bill me or not, but isn't know. it great to work here? <laughs> it's like, by the way. No. <laughs> yes, um, and also, if you think of anything you want to ask him when the program's over, we won't give him your Our address. Arlene is <laughs> handing out free advice from doctors. Today. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so this outfit, my mom, I had this on a previous show, and my mom texted me. She's like, I love the blue shirt with the black jacket, so I wore it for her today. Yes, and... Um, and it says Christmas lights are my I favorite I want to send color. my uh, prayers and thoughts to your parents. They've mm -hmm. been through a bad time. They're mm -hmm. coming around, though. Oh, yes. Yep. All right. Um, these are pecan pie bars and so so easy you think pecan, pecan anything pecan pie any mm -hmm. pie, and you think Major. what a hassle and but this is the easiest recipe you're going to get for pecan pie bars mm -hmm. now let me tell you arthleen blessed me today <laughs> it calls for crescent rolls okay? want to be a blessing but they have a crescent dough sheet now so you don't have to sit and pinch all of the little seams together and, and you've pinched quite a few on, yes it uh, made my life so much easier you've pinched oh, quite a few oh, uh, there we go yeah. you've pinched quite a few you on this show yes and this is like so much it, it was a blessing to me this morning that's all I'm saying mm -hmm. okay so okay and I'm gonna mix so together you have a half a cup of sugar an egg a teaspoon of vanilla two tablespoons of butter melted and we added a lot more pecans than it than it said because it's supposed to be pecan part bars and it had a quarter cup of chopped pecans and it wasn't enough I'll tell you what's gonna thrill these viewers is that you can have basically pecan pie very easy, so very easy. Simple. So Did you start out with the sugar or the egg? Any, just put Doesn't it in. matter. Yeah, okay. and corn syrup. I forgot to mention the yeah. corn. It's corn syrup too. Yeah. Yeah. So so now it doesn't say to spray the pan, but you know what? I sprayed it a little bit anyway, just because you don't want to have a mess, right? You want to be mm -hmm. able to get. It. Now watch how simple this is. So easy. No pinching. The perforations. It's amazing. It's the little things. <laughs> she was she was absolutely I was like you have blessed me so much morning. because sitting and pitching those perforations kind of a pain. It was like I'd bought her a diamond ring. Well, for, I don't know not if it quite. would be that dramatic, but yeah. 
So you just take this, and if it is, if you do, can't find the, the sheet and you have to use the croissants or the crescent yeah, rolls, can. just pinch the, the perforations and then go up the, the side a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? You're gonna put this in the pan, you're gonna bake this for eight minutes at 350, mm -hmm. which I almost forgot to do this morning. I was gung-ho, I did this, and I was just getting ready to pour the stuff in, and thank you, Holy Spirit, for hitting me because it was like, no, don't do that. Yeah. So she's simply mixing together all of her ingredients. There's pecans, all the corn syrup, sugar. There's the, all this the is not a healthy part. recipe, okay? Not healthy. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna bake this for eight minutes. I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna pour this on top of it, and we're gonna bake it for about 20 minutes at 350. Yeah, uh, now do you need to uh, let that cool before you put the this mm -mm. topping on? No, okay. but you need to let it cool afterwards, okay? Yeah. Which we didn't do, so we'll let's see what happens here. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's now, gorgeous. Look at it, and look, at look how simple. Uh, and it should probably cool a little bit longer, shouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Let, I'll let you <laughs> yes, cut it. Yes, it should. Mm -hmm. Let me see, is it super hot? Okay, we're okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is gonna be delicious. I think, uh, Oh, look you know, I think the best thing out. you can do for like your neighbors or for friends or anything, mm -hmm. and make them a little box of goodies and send it to them because that comes from the heart, right? I have two friends who do that in their neighborhood, mm -hmm. and they are the servants of the Lord. And they're the the they're the um um my I just lost my favorites. They're the favorites of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I lost my words mm -hmm. there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're she not going to try. She blames this, right? it on her chemo brain. I blame it on my medicines. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's delicious. Does it taste just like a pecan pie? It does. Oh, That's the easiest recipe. Yeah. What a treat. I'm I'm gonna walk away as soon as this camera stops because I you'll eat, eat all, all of, of this. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well also, um, mm. don't forget all year long, food gifts are wonderful. Yes, don't Just wait for the holidays because then they all come at once. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> like a banana nut bread or mm -hmm. there's so many things. Mm -hmm. I remember one year, someone we love very much here mm -hmm. is going through a, a hard time and she did a bunch of food gifts and I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. I, other things go right by. Yep. Okay, this information for this recipe is coming up on your screen. It's free, you get it the way you want it and uh, then you're gonna Meet my friend, Dr. Charles Page, and got a lot of good information coming for you from him. Stay there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, I'm so thankful and happy to welcome back to Homekeepers, Dr. Charles Page, who, when he was here before, talked about sleep issues, and I think that's a very big problem in the United States today because we're all kind of like this. And he is father of five, a wonderful, devoted Christian with a ministry in his church, and a surgeon, and you're trying to get five kids through college. Yes. You make me tired. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It, 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 blows, it, it, it wears me out just think, just trying to wrap my mind. Now, do you it. have any through yet, uh, finished? So I have a senior in college, and he wants to go into law school. My second son is actually studying Hebrew and linguistics. He can speak Hebrew, and he can speak Greek, and he wants to translate the Bible into different languages, so he wants to be a missionary. And my oldest daughter is graduating from high school. She wants to be a journalist. And then Jane Aubrey was here in the studio, and she she's actually writing her first book. So <laughs> it's just awesome. And then Charlie, we just hope Charlie, we're just trying to keep him out is of jail. Is Charlie the baby? He's 12, yeah. Oh, so, but he's I'd a like to meet Charlie. He's a great kid. I bet he is, and there's something about that last, last one. Last child. Everybody's had a... I want to say something. You know, I was thinking about your medical bill and that advice I gave you. Listen, I'll call it even if I can have some of those pecan bars before okay. I leave. Okay, okay. <laughs> as soon as he came, I pulled a little pill out that because I pretty much anti-pill. Uh, thanking God for great, great health for the year. So yeah, I said, is I this know. okay? And he said, so you were going to bill me, but now I don't have to pay. Just your... pecan bars. I'll be okay. happy. We'll call okay. it even. Even. All right. How do you have time to write a book? 
Well, uh, I don't sleep much, actually. And this book is, uh, one of the things I realized about this book is that these are just little snippets of uh -huh. stories. And, and I didn't realize what I was doing when I was writing, but really what I was doing is processing these events. You know, even as physicians, we have these things that happen in our lives, and we really don't know how to make sense of them. You know, there's some things that happen that just we'll never understand on this side of heaven. And so that's kind of what kind of motivated me to write these stories. And a lot of times Christians are prone to say, why would God let this happen? Yep. Of course, you see that all the time. Let me mention at the top of this uh, conversation that there's going to be two ways you can reach Dr. Page that will be on the screen from time to time. The first one is a website, and the other one, is it a text? Yeah, just text, just with your cell phone. You know, folks are... I mean, I'm, I'm technologically challenged. I'm still a dinosaur, but you Jane just text, Aubrey can help you. Yeah, Jane Aubrey can do it, but you just text BELIEVE to 66866 and it connects you with our, you know, our, our just our, our, our blogs and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, did you know at a very young age that you wanted to be a doctor and specifically a surgeon? No, I, I never opened a book in high school, and that's a long story. But um, you know, after it's after a sad after, story. Well, I, I know, and I'm actually writing another book about that about <laughs> about failing my first math test, the life equation. Uh -huh. But anyway, but uh, no, I didn't. You know, I became a Christian about 16 years of age, and God began to move in my life. And you know, my my mother and father never went to college, and so. It was a journey that we really didn't, I really didn't know how I was going to get there. But mm -hmm. fortunately, God, you know, grace, grace, uh, grace led me and, and, and has taken me thus far. And it's been a great journey. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, mention this book, A Spoonful of Courage for the Sick and Suffering. And I told you at the top, it kind of changed my whole thinking. Because here's a, here's a physician who goes into every kind of situation and, and we got COVID now. Right. Problems. But um, when people are at their worst and he sees the courage and the bravery that a lot of your patients have. Correct. And these are snippets. You can read two or three chapters of the setting and then. Yeah. Because uh, so it's I'm, not like a continuing yeah. story. No, Arthur. And that's why I was able to write the book because it's in little snippets and kind of the way my life mm -hmm. rolls is that, you know, I often don't have a, a big, you know, big chunk of time to write. But I'm not the hero of this book. The hero is the patients. And the I've patients. changed the names, of course, for confidentiality mm -hmm. purposes. But they're the heroes. And, and you know, I've kind of had this ringside seat to suffering uh, all these years. And I realize that the real heroes are these people. And, and it's amazing the, the impact that faith can have in a health challenge. It, it just amazes mm -hmm. me how some of these people respond, you know, even in the midst of, uh, of a crisis. Mm -hmm. And somehow he's found time to write a book about that. Let's mention this before we go on with the book. This is a journal, right? Correct. And so, you know, as I, as I was writing the book, I didn't realize what I was doing until later. But this is, you know, Christians, I think, kind of have a grasp of, of the benefits of journaling. But there's a growing body of literature that talks about the health benefits of journaling. It decreases our stress. It improves. It lowers our blood pressure. It improves our liver no function. No kidding. There's all kinds of things that we're I've finding out in the literature. Because I've always had a hard time getting it going. Uh, you know, I was going to journal journaling. or something. <clears throat> well, what this is is so, uh, you know, most people just stopping and sitting uh, you know, and sitting uh, is really hard. So these are, this is a DVD or YouTube videos that you can listen to and it kind of guides you and mm -hmm. guides you to be able to answer the questions. Y you know, it's, it's, it's really just a time to, to sit down and, you know, we talk about the Word and the Spirit and let those things minister to us. And I think, I think we've underestimated that both spiritually and health-wise. And it's very... What journaling does. It's got a lot of direction as to how you can right. do it, but that actually has health benefits, right? It does. It does. In fact, there's studies that have been done that show that people who journal actually have improved uh, wound healing after surgery. Mm -hmm. Just all kinds of things. And I think it has to do with the fact that it lowers our cortisol and our catecholamines, you know, our adrenaline. And just, you know, it just kind of levels us out and, and puts us in, a, in more of a kind of a peaceful state when we sit and we reflect on our experiences and write those down, especially when we do that well, spiritually. Bible tells us to do that. Yeah, and you know, and, and meditate upon God's word. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the person—it was a doctor who recommended this book, and he he did something in changing the way we do blood transfusions. Yeah. So uh, the person who did the forward was a, was a, a, a Dr. Kuhn. He has a PhD. He was a pastor, and this was back in the '80s. 
and he uh, had He was him, a pastor and a doctor? Well, not, well he's a PhD. We don't yeah. have a PhD. But oh, okay. He, he was playing basketball and he uh, developed a hemarthrosis. He, you know, he bled, he had hemophilia. And so he had a blood transfusion and at the time he, he acquired HIV and hepatitis C at the same time. From the blood? From the blood transfusion. And unbeknownst to him, he transmitted it to his wife. And his wife died of HIV. This was back when HIV, you know, back in the 80s. Right, right. We didn't have any answers. And you want to talk about COVID uh -huh. virus. Mm -hmm. We still don't have a vaccine for HIV. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and so he, it kind of became his mission uh, to, you know, to, to really work with the government and encourage them, you know, to have some, some regulations as far as, uh, you know, as far as blood transfusions and things, because nobody was really, uh, you know, looking at these they blood transfusions. At it, yeah. They were just, I mean, they weren't checking for HIV and hepatitis C uh, until he really pushed the government. And so it's interesting, if, if you've ever had a blood transfusion, you have to thank, uh, you know, Dr. Kuhn for that. Yes, and, and isn't that the story of medicine? How it keeps improving because of people like this. Yeah, you know that, that's why they call it the practice of medicine. Aren't yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. <laughs> Here's my surgeon; he's practicing. Yeah, right, yeah. right. What what made you go into surgery? That well, just fascinates me. So, I, so I was in Houston, and I became an enamored. I, I was a, a trainee under you might may have heard of Doctor DeBakey, Michael oh, DeBakey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, I was one of his last residents, and that really is one of the things that kind of motivated me. But still, yet I'm still of a small town person, and so uh, I was able to become a general surgeon. So I carry a lot of different hats, and so you'll see that as you read the stories. Yes. <clears throat> it's not just one particular type of thing. It's a whole kind of barrage of of, of different mm -hmm. scenarios that people people face, you know, traumatic things, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of things, cancer, all kinds of things. I've, I've thought of how Christians, if you've got a prayer list, put your scientists and doctors on it because Absolutely. look at the miracle since I've been born. And I, I was at a, a party not too long ago with, and Phil Driscoll was right. sitting at the table and my daughter-in-law gave my son a kidney 21 years ago. Oh my goodness! And I'm I'm just so thrilled. They're both doing fine. Uh, he's got, you know, he's got some health problems, but he's right. been a pastor for 26 years. He's doing fine. Um, and Phil told me that his son, a few years ago, had given his grandson, a little kid, a, a kidney, and he said they're developing a bionic kidney that will come from one cell. Correct. Pray, folks, pray, you know. Um, look and at the things, if, if we added the power of God to them that could really heal and touch humanity. Right. One of the stories in the book is about a little girl. It was, it was a very traumatic night, and the girl and her, um, and her brother were playing in an apartment, and they were playing cowboys, and the, the boy lassoed her with a rope, and she actually fell, and she... She, she fell off the stairs and broke her neck. And uh, she came in basically brain dead. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I first saw her, I knew that she was, she was gone. But the nurses encouraged me to, you know, to do something. You know, sometimes we do things in medicine, sometimes not to treat the patient, but to treat us because we want to we wanna know that we've mm -hmm. done everything. So this girl actually, we resuscitate her and, she, and she, her vital signs returned, but she was a brain dead invalid. Really a sad situation. But as we look at that, we see that, you know, as we kind of walk through the process with the family, they donated all those organs, you know, for transplant. You know, and her, her liver mm -hmm. was split and it was given to two kids. Her heart was oh. a transplant. Her, both her kidneys, you know, all, all these things were transplanted. You know, what a picture of, and, and thinking about your daughter-in-law and thinking yeah. about Phil Driscoll, yeah. what a picture of, of sacrificial giving. Yeah that ultimately is, is modeled by Jesus and the ultimate sacrifice that he gave, giving he gave his, his life, life for us, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a life gift, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So that's what these stories are about. They're just little yes. stories that help us understand You, you would love God. this book. I'm not kidding. The name of it is A Spoonful of Courage. And like I said, that we've got two different ways you can reach the doctor. They're kind of circulating around. You can write them down. Um, could, we, could, could you help me crawl into the mind of a, a surgeon, mainly a surgeon, I think, uh, but any doctor, and you face the heartache, you face loss, and all, but most of them I've seen, they 
kind of keep a stiff upper lip. So what are they like emotionally, okay? Well, you know, we do have emotions and we do care about it. I think most physicians really do care about our patients and it's very difficult. I mean, I had a patient, we were talking before the show, I had a patient who um, had a large cancer going on his chest and mm -hmm. he had a lot of medical problems and, you know, the fear of COVID and all those things and we didn't really know what to do. and. We did an operation and he did well with the operation, but ultimately died of a heart attack. The thing that we weren't even thinking about, he died of. Even though everything was successful, um, you know, from a, from a surgical standpoint, the man, you know, died and went, and went to heaven. Mm -hmm. As I think about that man and, 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 and as I got to know him through this process, you know, he asked me to pray for him and his faith was very palpable. You know, and I just think about how he modeled that, you know, and, you know, and how even before surgery, I prayed for success, I prayed for healing, I prayed for all those things. That's the kind of doctor I want. Over that man's life. And, you know, of course, I can't pray for everyone, mm -hmm. but this man mm -hmm. wanted me to pray for him. So, so I prayed for him. And as I thought about that, I thought, man, God, why? Why, yeah. why did this happen to this guy? You know, and, I, and, and as I began to think about that, you know, we have to trust God even when we don't understand why. Mm -hmm. Even physicians and families and patients. But, you know, but in, in a sense, God did answer my prayer. God mm -hmm. did heal him. He's he did. Healed. He did heal him in heaven. You know, he did. Mm -hmm. He did fulfill his purposes mm -hmm. for his life. It wasn't the. It wasn't the way I wanted that an, mm -hmm. that prayer to be answered. Mm -hmm. But as I think about that, and I think about that man's faith, I mean, what a model. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing about this book is how um, you've carved a lot of life's meaning that can go right by you, just from these circumstances. Every day. Yeah. Now your office burned also that. That yeah, would be, that, that would be a tough one. I'm, about four what, years what ago. What about all your records and everything? Yeah, so we, well, well, most of them were burned as well. So what's interesting about that is that uh, it, was a, it was a freak electrical accident. And, you know, I'm in private practice. And I'm really kind of a dinosaur, you know, because most physicians are employees. But this was four years ago. My building burned down. And, um, you know, the fireman let me walk through the office. And there's a stairwell, kind of like this stairwell over here, where I would pray, and it was kind of one of those places. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm kind of always going, and so it's really hard for me to get down on my knees and pray. And, and, and I kind of wonder what had happened to that stairwell. Um, and as I kind of rounded the corner, I, corner, I realized that that stairwell was one of the few things that was still there. And in that stairwell, wow. I had this Bible, and the Bible was covered with soot. In fact, it was, it was signed by Franklin Graham that I had gotten from a uh -huh. mission trip to Kenya. And uh, that, that Bible, you know, as I looked at it and I took that soot off of it, the words were still there. The Bible was still intact. Praise and the I, Lord. Yeah, and it was amazing. And there was this old black doctor's bag, you know, kind of one of the old-fashioned yeah. doctor's bag. Once again, it had this new shine on it because of the soot. And I realized as I was going up these stairs, all the things that I could rebuild my life upon. Where, where, where the stairs kind of turned the corner, there was picture of my, pictures of my five kids and they were all at the age of four, and they were all, in, you know, we're from Texas. They were all in cowboy outfits, and the and the fire had singed them, and they'd kind of looked, you know, they were colored, and they had kind of singed to this grayish color, and they actually looked like Ansel Adams. And and <laughs> as I began to think about that, I began to realize that, wow, man, I, there were still people in my life, even though, you know, just like with the bag, you know, mm -hmm. my practice was going to change, but yet. I still had opportunities to serve people, mm -hmm. and I still had people to influence. But at the top, Arthurine, it was so cool. There was this cross. My wife had bought, had made this, bought this cross, and put on this beautiful stained wall. And the whole wall was charred and black. And so, you know, when I took that cross off the wall, it was amazing. Behind that charred wall, there was a there was a stained, imprinted picture of the cross. Yeah. You know, and I thought about that. So often in our lives, we're never going to understand why things happen. We're never going to be able to no. piece everything together. But, but I think one of the things that God does in our lives often is He takes, He takes those things and He 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 somehow weaves them into an air, into a place that we we reflect His image in our lives. Yeah. You know, as, as I thought about that, you know, right. there's so many things we're never going to understand the meaning of suffering on this side, you know, mm -hmm. of, of heaven. But yet, part of that process is that God is conforming us to His image. Like it says in, you know, Romans 8, 28 mm -hmm. and 29, you mm -hmm. know, about how all things work for good and how He is conforming us to the image of His Son. Well, I can't think of a greater combination than somebody who really relies on the Spirit of God 
and to be in that medical profession, especially surgery or whatever, that's a great combination. Well, I think there's a lot of believing physicians out uh -huh. there. You I know, once again, the doctor-physician uh, relationship is, is sensitive. I mean, you know, we have to be careful what we say. You know, once mm -hmm. again, we're, we're here not to necessarily, you know, we're here to serve people in the name of Christ. Uh -huh. And often those opportunities come up to share, especially when they ask. But, you know, um, uh, it, it's amazing the things that people tell you and the things that, that I learned from my patients when I've, over the years as I've learned to stop and just listen a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Do you ever have to just kind of go behind the door and cry a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Really? Let, let me tell you an interesting story. And this happened. This is a COVID story. Yeah, we got two minutes. Go this ahead. This is a COVID story. So this lady came in the office with her husband. He, was, he had dementia and he had been in the nursing home and I'd done a surgery on him. And then, and then he went to the nursing home and they'd been married 60 years. And, you know, of course, the, she began to share kind of what was happening in the COVID crisis. Of course, with the nursing homes, you know, the elderly are the ones that Absolutely, are the most yeah. affected by COVID. Yeah. And so... She told me, she said, you know, doctor, we've been married for 60 years, and it broke my heart because I couldn't be with my husband. You know what she did? Every day she took a chair and she went out on the outside of the nursing home, and she sat in that chair and looked through that window. Her daughter actually got a little microphone and put on her husband. She fixed an app on her cell phone. That lady went out there every day. When it rained, she took an umbrella. When it was hot, you know, take the Texas heat in the summer, she took that umbrella and she sat out there by her husband. Now I'll tell you, that's a devotion and a love that I don't did think people... Did he survive? He did. Praise he, the Lord. He did. He survived. So they're together again. And, they, and they're together again as, yeah. you know, things are beginning to yeah. open up. And yeah. so, but what a picture of devotion and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. we, we don't see that anymore. No, we sure don't. It's very, very rare. Uh, <clears throat> let me remind you that we uh, have prayer partners standing by right now. Telephone uh, numbers coming up on your screen. Uh, it's a human voice you can talk to, pray with you. Maybe some of the things that Dr. Page has said has just really ignited a memory or something in your spirit, and uh, you'd like to talk to someone. We have those people standing by right now to pray with you, so take advantage of it. And please, please join me next time. I thank God for the wonderful mm -hmm. guests He sends to us, and He sends a doctor that I can get a little free advice from. <laughs> doesn't get any better than that. So let me tell you for sure, we love you, we appreciate you, and please remember, my friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.